The majority of today's large land carnivores can be classified into two groups, pack hunters and solitary ambush predators. Because several groups have independently evolved to fall squarely into each category, it appears that these are the two most efficient survival strategies, at least for mammals. Phalids and canids represent two very different hunting strategies among today's large carnivores. All canines, which are macro predatory, subscribe to the former lifestyle. To be specific, that means the wolf, the African wild dog, the dole, the bush dog, and the dingo, as well as its little known relative, the New Guinea singing dog. All these animals work together in packs to bring down prey much larger than themselves, because each individual is small in comparison to the quarry. Overpowering prey through brute strength is unfeasible. Instead, they must use superior endurance to run victims into the ground. Cat evolution took a certain path, where the focus was on surprise attacks on unsuspecting prey and killing said prey as quickly as possible. As a result, they adapted to be extremely stealthy and sneaky, ever so patient and cunning and calculated, stalking about in the shadows and then exploding extremely quickly with great acceleration in a short chase, and they also adapted to be extremely effective and efficient killers. They developed specialized grasping paws with meat hooks on them to seize their target, and a specialized penetrating piercing bite, which they could precisely apply to the vitals of their target, whether it be the spine, the neck vertebrae, straight into the brain through the skull, straight to the heart through the chest, to the throat whether by suffocating or perforating the airway or even a suffocating bite over the mouth and nose. Different cat species use either one or more of these techniques. All are designed to kill the prey cleanly and precisely and quickly. So the chase is short and quick and the kill is short and quick. So why would they have the stamina? They specifically with great care and precision actively attacked and diminished any need for stamina with their focused adaptations. As a result, they lost it. Use it or lose it. They stopped using it. They specialized away from a drawn-out chase and a drawn-out struggle, and their stamina depleted in response to this specialization. If you look at a leopard, there's a lot you might notice about their adaptations. Working from left to right, we first have a very long, thin tail, perfect for balance. Then we have the muscular hind legs, which are noticeably larger than those on the front, allowing the cat to make powerful pounces. The wrists of the forelegs are highly elastic and flexible, which means that they can grapple prey with their paws. The claws on these paws are retractable to prevent the ground from dulling their sharpness. The ears have incredibly acute hearing enabling leopards to pick up minute noises in sound-dampering forests. The snout is very short and robust, built for delivering a quick, crushingly lethal bite. Inside it, the stabbing canines are by far the most prominent of the teeth. Now let's compare that to a wolf. The tail is shorter, but bushier, and is thus a useful communication tool. Rather than being thick and muscled, the legs are slim, designed with running in mind. The claws are not retractable and thus very blunt, but help a lot with traction. The snout, this time, is elongated with less bite force, but plenty of room for elaborate olfactory equipment, since carry well in open environments after all. Looking at the teeth, we see that the canines are smaller and it is the carnassials that stand out. These are built for crushing and grinding food, not killing. A canine recklessly wades into a duel with its prey. They don't sneak up on prey, they just start running towards it with a here-we-go-again attitude as they settle in for a long battle. Their bite is not a precise killing bite, but a versatile grabbing bite. They intend to grab hold and then do some messy, imprecise damage, and over time accumulate damage in a drawn-out back-and-forth battle. They have a get knocked down and get up again and keep going approach to hunting. If a feline fails to make its kill perfectly in the initial surprise burst of an attack, it would typically abort the mission, spring back into the shadows to reassess, and try again later, hoping everything will go exactly as planned next time. 
Hopefully next time the prey won't see it coming at all and won't even have a chance to fight back at all before it is dead. Most importantly, it avoids injuries by avoiding that back and forth struggle. Cats are typically solitary, so injuries are a big problem. Canines can be a little more relaxed about potentially getting injuries because their social unit will support them while they recover. So, what does this all mean? In short, most cats are adapted to be solitary ambush predators who lie in wait, pounce, and instantly kill their prey. On the other hand, dogs and their relatives are more geared towards using cooperation and stamina to run their prey into the ground and start eating before their victims are dead. That, in essence, is why canines have superior endurance to the average feline. Rather than engaging in long-distance pursuits, cats just get in close to the prey, concealed, and then dispatch it in seconds. There are exceptions to this rule, of course. Spotted hyenas, despite being on the cat-like branch of the carnivore orders, are deep inside canine camp when it comes to hunting tactics. They've got the same short tails, slim legs, non-retractable claws, long snouts, huge carnassials, and the social habits of dogs and their kin. In the big cat group, we have the lion, a pride-dwelling beast that has some adaptations more characteristic of the dog-like mode of hunting. And of course, there's a cheetah, a major outlier. Automatically, a cheetah is basically a greyhound with the head of a mountain lion. They have poor stamina, but their claws are nevertheless non-retractable. They have slender limbs for running, but their snout is short and deadly. Cheetahs don't really fit into either category. Rather, they use superior agility and speed to quickly chase down their prey, then dispatch it. Long story short, most large canines have better stamina than felines because they specialize in long-distance chases. Most large felines prefer to use brute strength, stealth, and efficiency to get something to eat. Before we end this video, we want to introduce you to a very interesting channel with content that covers a wide range of topics, including wildlife. The channel is called Facts Archive, and we suggest you subscribe to it because it creates quality content. We will leave a link to this channel in the description. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.